Hey everybody, it's Hutch from Sherry and Hutch, the Freedom in a Can couple, and we are coming to you from Stonington, Maine, down on Deer Isle, the coast of Maine, this gorgeous, gorgeous place. And we are working for the season at Old Quarry Ocean Adventures, which is a campground and outdoor outfitter. Now we get a lot of questions about our solar panel system that we use to power to our lives. So we're gonna actually walk you through how we do it and um, the, the system from, from beginning to end. So there's three things you need to keep in mind when you're talking about solar. You need to talk about collection, storage, and usage. So the first thing that we want to show you is collection. This is our Renogy 100 watt foldable solar panel. We made this bracket to carry it on the truck. We did that mostly because we were concerned about having our solar panel on brackets on top of our vintage 1957 uh, camper trailer. We weren't quite sure that it was going to be able to take highway speeds without it tearing something off. And um, we also wanted to have a movable solar panel so that we could have our trailer in the shade and be able to put our solar panel out in the sun. This Renogy solar panel is super easy to put up. It's got an integrated, it's got an integrated stand you can see right here that sets it at the right angle. Just lock into place. And then we connect it directly to the cable which is going into the trailer. So put this out in the sun you're collecting all the solar energy and during the summer months we don't have a problem collecting um, even for a couple hours we can charge up our batteries. So let's come on inside and I'll show you where the battery is. So we use just one deep cycle marine battery, that's a 12 volt battery. And we keep it stored under the passenger side banquette. A lot of people keep it out on their um, out on their tongue in a battery case. We chose to bring it inside. So you can see here the wires come from the outside and they come into the charge controller. This is super important. You got to have one of these because it prevents the battery from being overcharged. So the cables go to the battery and the battery goes to your display which tells us that right now, even in the shade, we've got 12.9, which means our battery is darn full. Now, the rest of the leads go through the kitchen over here and connect directly to two things. The first is our only direct current 12 volt appliance. That's our fantastic fan vent, which is just the best darn thing that we put into this trailer when we did the renovation. And this is our air conditioner. It also helps get our any cooking fumes or anything like that out of the trailer, cool things down really quickly. If we close all the windows at night and just leave the one open by our bed, there's a cool breeze all night long coming through because of this one pushing out. So that's our direct current appliance. Our other appliances, which are um, just like regular appliances, household appliances, they get powered through the inverter. So the, the power from the battery comes directly, connects to the inverter, when you and this this transfers the energy to 110 a standard household appliance so we run our um, our sconce lights which are LED bulbs right here we also run our rope lights which go all the way around the trailer and we can also charge up our laptops um, and we can plug using these uh, USB connectors, we can directly charge our cell phones and our other small appliances. Um, you can also see that we have two uh, outlets coming from the inverter to the outside of the cabinet, as well as two outlets which are connected to shore power when we're in an area that does have it. So we can plug an extension cord directly to the outside of the trailer and we can get direct 110 current. Now, the secret here is um, not to overpower your lives. What you can't do with our system is you can't run 
uh, a toaster oven, you can't run a coffee maker, you can't run a hair dryer. But the amazing thing is this little system is scalable. So if you want to power those things, you just need more collection, more solar panels, and more batteries. And then a, a bigger inverter to make, to make those, uh, those appliances work. We didn't want to do that. We've been living without those for six years and we've still been able to toast bread, cook, and, and uh, do all the things, make coffee every morning, all the things that we need. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's great, but what happens when you don't have sun? And that's where this guy comes in. So this is our Arenergy Phoenix generator. This is exactly like our big system, only in miniature. It's got a 20 volt solar panel it's also got an integrated battery and an inverter so we can run again appliances off of this thing so when we don't have good sun when it's been raining for weeks or last month when we were in Cleveland and we just didn't put our solar panel out we got lazy we were running the fan all night long we ran out of juice we can use this as a backup system and it really works really great um, so for us Solar power is all about keeping it simple and um, trying to, to, to not overpower our lives and just keep it, keep it right with the things that we need to make our life work. So check us out at freedominacan.com. Follow us on Facebook at Adventures with Hamlet, Freedom in a Can. Thanks so much, y'all, and keep the sunny side up.